a very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this uh, course on simulation of communication systems using matlab we were talking about uh, probabilities we had talked about uh, conditional probability and about independent events now we will quickly review bayes theorem in this lecture so bayes theorem in its compact form we know that probability of e given f equals probability of divided by probability of e so probability of f but we can equivalently say that probability of e intersection f equals probability of f given e times probability of e and hence probability of f equals probability of f given e probability of e t of f but as we had seen in the case of uh, total probability we can write the probability of f as probability of f given e times probability of e divided by f probability of e plus probability of f given e complement probability of in general so i'll continue bayes theorem on the next slide so moreover in the case of bayes theorem we can say that if the sample space can be partitioned into events e1 to en such that i e j that is that is e i and e j are mutually for to j and or union of i goes from 1 to n e i forms the sample space so these are called the partitions of the sample space if uh, these two conditions are met that is uh, ei to en are partitions then can write probability of f or uh, probability that uh, of the event f can be written as probability of f this equals f of union of i goes from 1 to n e i basic laws of set theory this gives us since E I are mutually exclusive. E I intersection F will also be mutually exclusive. I goes from one to n. F given E I. This so. 
with this we can write Bayes theorem as I given f as probability of f given e i times probability of e i divided by sum goes from i 1 to n So this is the general form of the Bayes theorem that uh, we will use and uh, before we continue on to the next lecture, it is good to have a quick description of uh, the Bayes theorem or uh, quick application of the Bayes theorem. So for example, consider that disease is present in the human population with probability p and there is a test that has an accuracy q that is it turns positive with a probability q if you have the disease and it turns negative with probability q if you have the disease it turns negative with the probability q if you do not have the disease. So, given this information what is the probability of having the disease if you test positive. So, what is the probability of having that disease if you test positive? So, the general answer would be that it is fairly obvious, but uh, we will so show something counterintuitive now. So, let the probability of having that disease P D equal P that is the probability of not having that disease let the event let d denote the event d denote the event that you have that disease and let it be p probability of d complement equals 1 minus p which is uh, you not having that disease now. So, let the event t denote the test turns out positive let the event t denote that uh, the test turns out positive and therefore, t complement test is negative. Now, what we are given is that probability of t given d equals probability of t complement given d complement equals q and probability of t complement given d equals probability of t given d complement equals 1 minus q fine. So, and what we want is probability of d given t that is 
the probability of you having the disease when the test turns out positive. This is what we want. So, using Bayes theorem we can write probability of T given D times probability of D divided by probability of T given D probability of D plus probability of T given D complement probability of D complement fine. So, this becomes Q times P divided by Q times P plus 1 minus Q times 1 minus P fine straightforward. Now, to add perspective let us uh, put in some numerical values let uh, P or to add this perspective let us put in some numerical values and uh, let us say that P equals say 10 to minus 5. So, every 100,000 or every 1 lakh people this is uh, prevalent in just one person. So, if you are unfortunate enough you are actually lakh ek and Q say this is 99 percent accurate. So, a 99 percent accurate test is very good say let us say that the test is 99.9 percent .9 accurate. So, Q equals 0 0.999 or 1 minus Q is 10 to power minus 3. So, that said let us uh, say probability of D given T equals P Q divided by P Q plus 1 minus Q equals 0 0.999 into 10 to power minus 5 divided by 0 0.999 into 10 to power minus 5 plus 1 minus 10 to power minus 5 into 0 0 1 which equals approximately 10 to power minus 3 into 10 to power minus 5 divided by 10 to power sorry this approximately equals 10 to power minus 5 divided by 10 to power minus 5 plus minus 3 approximately equals 10 to power minus 5 divided by 101 into 10 to power minus 3 approximately equals so 1 percent. So, in such a case the probability of you actually having that disease is just 1 percent. So, you say that this conditioning or this Bayes theorem still increases the probability of you having that is uh, by 3 orders of magnitude, but still this is uh, it increases from 10 to power minus 5 to 10 to power minus 2 or 1 in 10 a lakh to 1 in 100, but still even if the test turns out positive you just have a 1 percent probability of uh, having that ailment. So, actually you can show that anything an accuracy that is uh, greater than only accuracies that are greater than 1 minus 10 to the power minus 5 will tell you something significant or only tests that have an accuracy greater than 1 minus p will tell you something significant about uh, your ailment. So, that said we stop our discussion on Bayes theorem. In the next lecture we will cover the idea of random variables. Thank you.